next speaker this evening is Jeffrey Donenfeld. Um, he, uh, <laughs> he hadn't answered my getting to know you questions. And when it becomes the 11th hour, I get very aggressive about them. And, uh, and usually I'll get some sort of like half-assed response. By the way, the two people I had to reach out to, not half-assed. In his case, the dare that he accepted was to run around the South Pole when it was negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly, probably not wearing enough clothing at the time to be safe. I, of course, picture him in like flippers and underwear, but he showed me a picture and he is very bundled, but apparently not bundled enough. Negative 60 degrees sounds tremendous for the sweating woman on stage right now, but only like for a, like a jump in and out kind of situation and there definitely wouldn't be running. Um, however, uh, Jeffrey does all kinds of adventurous things and is going to be talking to you about planes. So please, round of applause for Jeffrey. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Jeffrey. And uh, most of us, I'd like to think, have, have flown uh, commercial airlines, sometimes very comfortably in first class, uh, sipping a drink from the bar cart or multiple drinks from the bar cart, and, and sometimes not so comfortably, uh, in, in economy, with infants cr cr crawling all over you. Uh, I've been there before, and I've always wanted to fly, but maybe not always in this style. I've always wanted to fly the plane myself, but not a big jet, a super tiny plane. One of the most common aircraft out there, the Cessna 172. Uh, most pilots learn to fly with this plane, and uh, it's got four seats, one engine, and zero bar carts. <laughs> uh, initially, during the pandemic, I, I, I thought that learning to fly would give me a, a good outlet, a, a good means of escape from the pandemic. Uh, and what it turned into was an amazing vehicle for me to get over a lot of the fears that I have uh, about my, my career and my life and uh, prove to myself that I can do hard things. Uh, I, recently, I re recently left my job and decided to take a big upward step in my career. Thank you very much. Decided to take that big upward step, but how do I do it? I don't even know. And I don't even know if I believe in myself to be, to, to be able to do the job that I say that I can do. Am I just bullshitting? Do I have that imposter syndrome? Uh, or can I actually make, make what I what I wanted to have happen, uh, happen, and actually, uh, you know, walk the walk. I don't know. So I decided that flying was going to be my way of proving that I could do it. Because if I can't do it, then I wouldn't be up here right now with you. And so learning to become a pilot, uh, it involves a lot. There's a lot of book learning involved. Uh, you have to, you know, learn laws and regulations, all sorts of navigation, uh, mechanics, physics. Uh, meteorology. You have to learn how to, to read charts. Uh, you have to learn uh, how to talk to air traffic control and use that super smooth pilot voice and read back complex instructions like you actually know what they're talking about. Not always true, but you read it back anyway. You've also got to get the physical aspect right. You've got to train your body to understand how the plane moves, uh, muscle memory of where all the, in, uh, where all the buttons are, uh, understand your air speeds and everything. Um, and then most importantly, and this was the, the, the real big aspect for me, you have to develop the confidence to actually put it all together and get up there and fly the plane and trust in yourself that you can actually do that hard thing of flying the plane. Uh, because no matter how much book studying you do, and how many tests you take, once you're up in the sky and, and you're all alone, it, it's all you. And it takes a lot to actually uh, have the confidence. And I feel like that's flown to, flowed to a lot of other things in my life. I remember the first time that I got in the plane alone in the middle of the night uh, down in Centennial, southern Denver, uh, to do a solo night flight. I took off just like normal, and it felt just like every other takeoff I've done. But then as I was cruising, cruising around over Denver, uh, it dawned on me, holy shit, I'm going to have to find the airport again in this little plane uh, amongst all of these lights and somehow get the plane back to the airport. And not only back to the airport, but get it on glide slope and get it in there. Um, 
And it's, it's just me up there. And so no matter what, no matter how many people in air traffic control I talk to and everything, if I need help, uh, I must land the plane. Uh, and that's, that's all there is to it. There's no bullshitting my way out of this. And floating the plane over the numbers and touching it down on the runway is, is one of the greatest feelings ever. And it's so confidence, in, in, uh, confidence boosting uh, to, to know that you did that. And that has really given me the confidence with my uh, uh, career step to, uh, uh, to be able to say, yeah, I can, I can do those things and I can... I, I can really do what I say I can do, and I'm an expert in my career. So I, I firmly believe that it, in, in your life, biasing your decision making towards doing the hard thing, doing the hard thing that scares you, uh, like flying a plane, maybe or public speaking, uh, makes all of the other things in your life seem a heck of a lot easier. And so in retrospect, with flying, making that hard decision to get up there in the sky and trust myself to fly the plane was the easiest decision I ever made. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. We're going to dance now. Okay. Hey. Hi, guys. Me again. Um,